not who's here, but who is not here right now, including Williams and Fantu. So good field position here for Burris to operate second quarter underway. And Gant on the far sideline, close to a first down. Uh, Ed Gant had a big touchdown catch last week in his Tiger Cat debut. Guy who spent a little bit of time on the Edmonton Eskimos practice roster went to camp with the S this season. Some familiarity with Eric Tillman now in the Hamilton Tiger Cat organization. Bringing Gant over. Third down. And over Ender. Martell's good with that drop kick that often will bounce back not this time it bounces into the end zone not what he wanted but the cats will take another point extend the lead to nine the hamilton tiger cats of course play this season in guelph because their new stadium is being built same place what was iverwind stadium in hamilton will be ready next year from pan am games as well the soccer facility it will be called tim horton's field rather appropriate is it not with a couple special guests let's go to matthew rod i'm here with the caretaker mr bob young and the coo of tim hortons david flanagan gentlemen congratulations mr young why did this deal make sense for the tie cats uh, it makes sense for the city of hamilton this is what private public partnerships are supposed to be about but mostly it's about donuts in the stands at, at the new Tim Hortons Field. It's about better coffee. It's about beautiful weather. Thank you, David. And, and David, to you, why did this make sense for Tim Hortons to get into this partnership? Well, we've been partners with uh, the Ticats for over 30 years now. Hamilton is where we're from. That's where our chain was born. The new, the new Tim Hortons Field will be almost two blocks away from uh, from our original store. And you know, it's a it's a community center, and our our owners uh, right across the land are are really you know they run their business in the community. That's what we're all about. It's a great partnership. Thank you, gentlemen, very much. Thanks again. Well, here at Alumni Stadium. Chad Simpson just ran right through the Hamilton Tiger Cats to put the Blue Bombers on the board. And this is just a great read and cut by Chad Simpson. Terrific block by the left guard, Chris Greaves. But Simpson, a guy who's been looking to break a big one. He's had a couple pretty nice ones here today. Looks like he's on track. Uh-oh, botch snap on the point after. So the Blue Bombers will not get seven, but six. Chad Simpson with his first touchdown of the new season. Blue Bombers on the board. Has his own version of the drive through 75 yarder. Now a three point game. Miscommunication on the point after. We always think these things are automatic, but. We've seen this season that they are not. Let's take another look at the touchdown. And watch that left guard, Chris Greaves. He's going to step up, seals his man to the inside, along with the tackle. Glenn January, that creates that run lane. And Chad Simpson shows some pretty good wheels here. And how about these numbers on him for the day thus far? Four for 94 on the ground. Came in averaging 3.9 yards a carry through the first two games. Yeah, the average has increased considerably <laughs> already. A 75-yard scamper for Chad Simpson. Absolute burst. Election changes now for this Blue Bomber team. Well, a couple of impressive runs for Chad Simpson, aside from getting that Bomber run game back on track. The other thing that it does that's important to this Winnipeg team helps with their protection scheme. If you're forcing the defense to honor the run, you're going to get more time to pass the clock. They keep the ball away from Lindsey Lamar, but it's to Siobhan Walker. Walker up near the 36-yard line. There is such a compelling compelling side story to this game tonight is the fact that you know Hamilton has the offense you know Winnipeg has the defense conversely Hamilton has struggled defensively and the Blue Bombers have also struggled offensively so everything the stars are colliding here tonight so far yeah and if you look at it that way you're gonna get some strength versus strength right here with Henry Burris the tie cat offense going up against a bomber D Strength here. This Bomber D has been out. 
Outstanding position for Nice snag by Ellingson. Greg Ellingson, first season out of Florida International. Ninth catch of the new season. We'll just take a quick look back at that snap from Chris Svetkovic to Mike Renault. Looked like it got in on the holder a little bit there. It's okay, they're still friends though. Svetkovic, the long time, long snapper for the Blue Bombers. There's a lot of work in the community. There's a holding penalty coming against Hamilton. This will come back. Javon Walker again. He has been the go-to guy so far, but this is going back. Holding. Hamilton number 66. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat, second down. Yeah, the right tackle, Greg White, has his hands full in that matchup against Big Alex Hall. Hall right here. White over here. Hall six foot six frame. He gets those arms extended and keeps White off of him. Can never really lock up and square up on him. Second and long. It is Javon Johnson with the interception, but this one is likely going to be vanquished. Yeah, Kenny Maynard appeared to jump from his defensive end spot. Burris recognized that he had a freebie. It was a freebie. Offside, Winnipeg number 96. Five-yard penalty, repeat, second down. They called Alex Hall on it. It looked like both sides actually jumped. Tim Burke will not be happy with that. Uh, looked like both defensive ends for Winnipeg were a little bit early on this one. The call goes against Alex Hall. Again, for a loss, Enoch Mwamba penetrating that front line, able to get to Henry Burris. Mwamba right in the middle of your screen. He's going to sneak up, spying the quarterback on this one. Good reaction from the third year middle linebacker. Javon Johnson to the 35-yard line on a 44-yard kick. Three-point ball game. Big play game so far here tonight at Alumni Stadium as well. CTV and Olympic gold medalist John Montgomery pair up for one thrill of a ride. The Amazing Race Canada starts Monday at 9, 8 Central on CTV. Welcome one and all, wherever you are watching, Canada and south of the border tonight. Winnipeg, Hamilton. Week three of the Canadian Football League. What a move there by Again, a little spin out of the backfield. Looked like he was going to be stopped and then had some positive yardage. Well, after a couple weeks of struggles, Chad Simpson is in the zone here, runs up into the teeth of the defense, doesn't see what he likes. Terrific move to reverse out of here, but you get a look at the speed of Tiger Cat linebacker, Jamal Johnson, to track him down on the play. You know how fast Chad Simpson is from that 80-yard touchdown run. At quarterback. Does this and really take off with the football? He scored two touchdowns last week for the Blue Bombers. A guy who will be called in and he will tuck it and take it. And Buck Pierce returns first down Winnipeg from their 49. Well, one of the big things that the Bombers feel that they get with Justin Goltz 
is a little bit more athleticism and obviously gives them a run threat when they don't want Buck Pierce to run. They'll obviously build some other plays off of that look with him in the game. Wing formation this time. The motion, Pierce. Here's the protection breaking down and he goes down. Sam Scott. Marries Buck Pierce. Sam Scott, the former Calgary Stampeder, number 92, stand up at the defensive end. And we saw a matchup like we got earlier with Alex Hall going against Javon Walker. You've got a pass rushing defensive end all by himself against the running back, Will Ford. That's just a huge mismatch on the backside of that scheme. Only one sack for the Cats after two weeks. They've got two sacks tonight. Boston pattern. And again, Corey Watson dives forward. Bombers felt that he should be getting an extra yard near the yardsticks, but they did not give that to him. Did he step out of bounds? That might be the question mark here. Well, people may be questioning the spot, but you sure can't question the effort of Corey Watson on this play. This was right in front of the Winnipeg bench. Watch Watson here. No, not out of bounds. And they may have an argument here on the spot of the football. He lays out, dives forward, and the official on the sideline actually marks it out a couple yards back of that. And that's the result. It will be third and about a yard and a half. throw a challenge flag a challenge a spot you don't see it very often again chatting with tom higgins last night about it not too many spots have been overturned but there have been some this one just may well watch and see if his feet hit the sideline there, oh, there. before he gets to that first that, down marker that indeed could be a great call feet see, down the feet are there down are they down they are down Went down, but it's been picked up. And quickly, Buck Pierce is stuck. Well, Hamilton's probably going to get called for too many men here with the late substitutions running in. I think they saw the challenge flag go down and maybe didn't see it get picked up, so they were slow with the substitution on the Hamilton sideline. So a lot of confusion here. Obviously, the flag went down. The flag was then picked up. Winnipeg immediately went to scrimmage. Did the Cats get caught with too many men? Or an illegal substitution with the timing of the player running in. Too many men on the defense. There it is. That's a 10-yard penalty. First down. Tough to see all of them in there, but trust me, there are 13. <laughs> so the Blue Bombers, after all that, lucky that there were too many men because they would have been stopped on third down. The drive continues. Go, Will! Go, Will! Four. Eric Harris again on the tackle. Well, Eric Harris, the third different starter at that nickel linebacker position for Hamilton in three games. Ricardo Coakley in week one, Terrence Parks week two. And now Harris as the Bombers go real. Second down and three. Once again, it is Will Ford bursting outside and again, based on the spot, it's gonna be very close. Likely another third down play coming here. Based on their last third down effort, if it wasn't for that penalty, they would have been stuffed. We'll have to change things up this time. Most likely they are going for it. And they are not going to go for it. They're going to take the points this time. See Corey Watson. 
walking on the back side of that play, losing his lid. And this time, third and one. Justin Pilardi comes up. Right on the 40-yard line. Renault puts it down. And Pilardi hits the upright and gets nothing. At GoDaddy.com. Six days ago, it rained on the home opener for the Hamilton Tiger Cats at their home away from home against the Edmonton Eskimos. I was thinking about you a lot because you were doing that game while I was in my living room watching it <laughs> dry. This was wet, wetter than wet. Yeah, for a lot of the players involved, coaches involved, broadcasters involved, the wettest football game that many people had been involved with. What a difference a few days make. And then, of course, major flood in Toronto a day later. A lot of rain. Beautiful night here. Sensational summer night. Henry Burris doing some dancing now. Burris to the sideline. And caught. Up near the 44-yard line, Bakari Grant has his first of the night. Bakari Grant. Most veteran of these young receivers in the game for Hamilton. Well, one of the keys to this play that allows Burris to step up is watch his running back, Lindsey Lamar, steps up, picks up that blitz from the linebacker, Deja Dunn. Burris just sidesteps it, allows him to keep his eyes downfield. From there, he can find Bakari Grant as he's on the move. 19-yard game. Out near the Hamilton 44-yard line. Six minutes to go before halftime. Line six speed. Hamilton. Little underneath toss for Bakari Grant again. And the Mwamba brothers are making their presence felt. Well, Koshi from his free safety spot coming downhill. I'm sure this is a little bit what it feels like to be Koshi and Enoch's little brother. Kelvin, who's a receiver. You know, you get involved in the backyard games and you got to deal with both of these guys. Second and seven. Oh, look at Another sack here by the Winnipeg sack squad. And they came unheeded. Dexter Davis, listed as a backup defensive end. He lines up as a linebacker on this play and appears to get lost in the count here. Five men down. Shimon Walker's got to count him as a linebacker. Walker goes left. Davis is on the right. And Boris is down. Monstrous kick from Martell. Javon Johnson, though, kicks it outside. He's got room. Johnson to the 35, to the 40. Cuts it back now. And Javon Johnson brings it back. No flags on the turf inside the Hamilton 50-yard line. Oh, nice bit of redemption for Javon Johnson in the return game after he had a couple of fumbles last week in Montreal. We know how dangerous he is. 54-yard punt from Josh Bartel. But that's pretty much negated. 49-yard return from Javon Johnson. Maybe helped by a little bit of a hold right there on the edge of Marty Marquette. Buck. Quick hitter to Corey Watson. Half the first down yardage. Well, nice use of the motion there by the Winnipeg Blue Bombers offensively to tr try and free up Corey Watson, a guy who's frequently involved in blocking schemes. Comes right down to the edge as if he's going to join in the protection. Ba block on the backside of a run and then bounces out into the flat. Catches the defenders flat-footed. Second down and four. Pierce on the sideline. Justin Gultz into the game again. Will he take off with it or will he throw? False start here.